We all know we're living in the last days. You know, uh, if you have any discernment at all, you know it, it's the last of the last days. And I, I know you know that. But I've never heard the church, especially preachers, pastors, tell so much the trials, the tests they're going through. How many people have said this last year or the last couple of years have been the most difficult time of their entire life and ministry? We've heard that said so much. And then Brother Turnage telling us that God spoke to him, made it very clear that Satan is coming to your house. If he hadn't been to yours, he's on his way. But he said, God said, but I am coming too. Amen. I'm coming to that house to bring up victory. And so you and I tonight have to know that the church has to be tried. I'm not putting us in the tribulation, but I'm just saying we have to be tested. We have to be tried for the church to have a testimony. When I was a, a boy growing up in church, I didn't pay a lot of attention, but I do remember one thing. We had a lot of testimony services. You know, uh, my dad says, anybody got a testimony? Two or three people would jump up at the same time. And he'd have to say, well, just a minute, you, you first, then you, then you. But, you know, that doesn't happen anymore because we don't pass any tests. Tests are for a testimony. And those people used to jump up and say, God gave me a job. God blessed me. God paid my rent. God healed me of, of a tumor. God did this. God did that. They were testimony services. And I believe God is trying to bring the church in this closing hour. You know, the writer of Hebrews said, for us to come together more so as we see the day approaching. If ever we need each other, it's now. And this is the time the enemy would love to divide us because he knows the strength in the unity. He knows the strength in the prayer of a brother, a sister, knowing they're interceding for you, holding on to God for you in that trial, in that test. But every one of us have to go through the trials, the tests in life. And there's a lot of question marks. And many times, if we don't know or understand, we'll look at that test and say, it must be something I'm doing wrong, or there's something I'm not doing right. But I want to tell you tonight, I believe God has given me a message for this co uh, convention. How can God get any good out of this? Turn with me to Genesis chapter 37. How can God get any good out of this? How many times people have asked that? Especially me. How can God get any good out of what you or I are faced with or are going through? Father, what a privilege to be in your house tonight. I pray for wisdom and knowledge that comes only from you. By your spirit, speak to us and through us. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, and God, a willing and obedient will to do what your word said do. Put in us tonight a perseverance of faith by the grace of God that we would stand true in the final test of our faith in this hour. I'm asking you to minister to every need in this house, answer God the unanswered questions. There's so many who have questions in their heart and in their mind tonight. I'm asking you by your spirit, by your word, to answer those questions. In your name I ask it. Amen and amen. Chapter 37, verse 5. Very familiar verses. And it said, And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said to them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheep. 
And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and he told it his brethren. And he said, Behold, I've dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him. And he said to him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But look at this. But his father observed the same. We'll stop right there. You know, we, we know this. And I don't want to just be redundant. But I, I, we all know that the writer at Paul in, in Romans said, all, We know all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. We all say that. We all know that. But we must really take time tonight and, and, and really observe for a minute. Do I love God? Yes, I do. I heard Brother Lee this morning. He stirred our hearts. I've never felt such a conviction about it, my relationship and intimacy with God and a, great need, and a greater need in a way ever in my life than I did this morning. It so stirred my heart. God wants time with us. But the question comes, do I love God? I believe we all do. Then you've got to settle that fact tonight, child of God. God loves you. I know He loves you. I know He loves me. Then that means everything, all things are working together for our good according to his purpose. What is his purpose? His purpose is to conform us to the image of Christ. We sing the song, To Be Like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. We sing a lot of songs. We make a lot of statements. I want to be like Christ. But with the first trial or test that comes, that begins to move and conform us and move us into the image of Christ, the first thing we do is we want to run from it or find some easier way out. When God himself has allowed that trial, God himself has allowed that test to come, it's easy to want to run from it. We don't like to have to face anything anymore. We don't like to have to go through and pay the ultimate price. Brother White and I talking this morning. Brother Clinton had said it to me even his last few days. But he said to him his, as well. As, as he said, pray that I'll stand the test of this final hour. I don't want to give in. I don't want to cave in in this final test. Saints of God, we're going to be tested. As I said, I'm not putting us in the tribulation, but I am going to tell you, the church has to be tested if it's going to have a testimony. And God is a bringing us to such a place tonight that we're going to learn something by allowing Him to conform us to the image of Christ. Joseph seems to be one of the most beautiful types of Christ. In the Old Testament, if God has called you and I, then gave you a great dream, great visions, then our first question would be, how could anything go wrong? I pleaded the blood over my wife and I night after night, week after week, year after year. 
and went through one of the most unbelievable trials that in the middle of the night had seizures, had many of them, back about two or three years ago and had a horrible time. I'd go to bed covered by the blood, knowing there wasn't nothing in my heart, willful in my heart or sin of any kind, and wake up not knowing where I was at, what happened or what was going on. And the question began to come to me, if you're covered by the blood, if you went to bed knowing you're right and ready to meet God, why would God allow that? And the question begins to come, and it begins to wear on you and wear you down. And I begin to realize that God Almighty and God alone is in charge of Duke Downs. And God alone has that hedge around me. As Job of old, only God can allow that hedge to come down unless it's disobedience. But you tonight, I want to talk to you. You've walked in all the light you have. You've walked in all the obedience you know. And the enemy seems to have got in a blow in your heart, your life life, your body, your church, your finances, I want to tell you tonight, God Almighty has allowed that to happen to you. How can there anything go wrong when God's hand is on me? If God showed me what he wants to do in my life, then God will see to it that it happens according to his will. The thing about it tonight, church, is a, when we totally trust God, then you quit trying to control the, the outcome. The reason we have a problem with the will of God is we pray, God, nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. And the minute it starts to work against the grain, we back up and say, this can't be the will of God. But we have to know total trust is never disappointed. No matter what I face, what I go through, if it's total trust, I've totally committed it to God. He will give me the grace to come through this. Settle it tonight. You love God. I love God. God loves me. Then it's working for my good according to his purpose in my life. Then we must settle it tonight that everything God's doing, everything God's allowing in our life tonight is building faith in that life and giving glory to God. The first thing that has to happen or happens to Joseph is when he's told, he told his dreams to his brothers. And then his second dream he told to his father and his brothers. This only made his brothers angry with him as well as jealous of him. Even his own dad questioned his dream with great concern. You mean to tell me, son, that your mother and I and your brothers are going to come and bow down before you and do homage to you? Joseph's brothers were jealous of him, but his father observed the saying and he pondered over it. Jacob had to think, I wonder what God is trying to show me. What is God hid from me concerning the will of God for my son Joseph? How many times when something was said, the Bible said that Mary hid that in her heart. She pondered it. She knew something eternal was connected to what was said or what was going on. Jacob knew there's something about what my son keeps saying. I know there's something eternal in the work of it. One day when all of Joseph's brothers were out in that field, you all know the story. Taking care of the flock, Jacob sends Joseph to check on them to see how they're doing. When they seen him coming, the Bible said they conspired to kill him. As long as you and I are in the will of God tonight, hear this preacher, nobody can kill you. You've got to know that tonight. If you're in the will of God, 
You must know you're not going to die a day early or a day late. You're not going to heaven any sooner than you're supposed to. I don't care what the conspiracy is. I don't care what the world says or what anyone else says. You're not going to die until God says so. If you're in the will of God, nobody can kill you. I want you to know tonight, Satan cannot kill you until God says, come home. You've got to know that. Quit fearing the threats of the enemy. Quit fearing all the threats. Mama had it. Daddy had it. Grandpa had it. So you have to have it. Hogwash. Quit fearing the lie of the pit of hell. You are in the will of God. You're going to live until God says, come home. Yes. Amen. Amen. Even though the enemy's plan was to kill him, God changed their mind. They decided to sell him to the Egyptians as a slave. It would seem, I'm sure, to Joseph that he would rather be dead than to be sent away from his mom and his dad, his family, a young Hebrew boy sold as a slave to Egypt is nothing but an abomination. But God gave Joseph favor with Potiphar and put him in charge of everything he had. How can God get any good out of this? He's nothing but an innocent son of Jacob. And now he's being sold as a slave to Egypt. That's an abomination to a Hebrew boy. When you have a thus saith the Lord in your life, in your spirit, you and I can know that I'm in the will of God even if I'm in the enemy's camp. Hear me, child of God. What God told you in an old-fashioned altar, whether it was a week ago, a year ago, ten years ago, hold on to that. That's been buried in your, thus saith the Lord, in your spirit. All the false prophets and false prophetesses can come and go. Yet the, thus saith the Lord that's in your spirit. Let it live on. Believe me, this preacher has faced them one after another. A few years ago, an unbelievable attack came out of hell against this preacher. But I learned something through the most severe trial a man could ever face or go through. If your heart's right and you're in the will of God, nobody can stop you. Nobody can close the church. Nobody can stop the ministry. Nobody can stop the anointing. What God called together, let no man put it asunder. I'm not talking about arrogance or sticking your head in the cloud. I'm just talking about knowing there's a thus saith the Lord in my heart and in my life. And that has driven deep into the heart of that believer. They decided to sell him. We know the abomination of it. If this is where God put me, then this church is where I belong. Even in the will of God, Joseph is lied on by Potiphar's wife. I want to tell you tonight, I don't care who you are. If God's going to use you like he wants to use you, you will be lied on. How dare somebody lie about me? They're going to. It's how you handle it. It's how you react to it. I learned a long time ago, you don't have to defend yourself if you're right. Let God defend you. Vengeance is mine, I'll repay. You don't have to vindicate or avenge. Just make sure your heart's right with God. Let them lie and lie and lie. If it's true, repent. If it's not, keep your head up and keep right on going. Why? Because it's all in the will of God to be hated by your brothers. It's all in the will of God to be sold into slavery, to be lied on by Potiphar's wife. Is all a part of the will of God. How can God get any good out of this 
My brothers hate me. They sold me. Potiphar's wife lies about me. What else could happen when all I'm doing is God's work? Is this what I get for serving God? Of course, I'm the only one ever said that. Now Joseph goes to prison for it. But the Lord is with Joseph and shows him mercy and gave him favor, even with the warden. Why? Because God's will for Joseph is being done, even though he's in a prison for something he didn't do. But God made him to prosper, even in the prison. Wow. How much of the trust the test, have we lost the effect of it, the faith of it, the glory to God of it, because we whined and cried, complained, and took a microwave out instead of letting the perseverance of our faith have its perfect work that we might be perfect and entire wanting nothing, but we run from the trial when God says, Satan, have you considered my servant? Have you considered my daughter? I have, but they'll, if you let me get to them, they'll curse you to your face. Have your best day, Satan, because when you get done, their faith will grow. I'll be glorified. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not preaching a guesswork thing. I'm not talking about manby pandy gospel. I'm talking about facing it yourself in the face of hell, knowing that God Almighty has put me here. Because it's God's will. Two of Pharaoh's officers, you know, Chief Butler, Chief Baker, they're thrown in prison with Joseph. They both had dreams. They didn't know what they meant. Joseph said, don't the interpretations belong to God? God gave, them, gave him the interpretations. He told the butler, when you get out of here and you get restored to your position with the king, don't forget about me. I'm in here for no fault of my own. So when you get there, don't forget about me. Get me out of here. Watch this. But after God used Joseph to interpret the butler's dream. The butler forgot all about Joseph. How could God use Joseph and then let him be forgotten for two more years? Can I tell you tonight why? Because he's still in the will of God. If your heart's right, your motives are pure. Your heart's pure. God put you there so that God can be glorified in it. Let faith grow. Let God bring you through that test, that trial. How can God get any good out of this? I've asked it a thousand times, but I've learned, church, what I'm telling you. He will get good out of it. He will get glory out of it. He will bring you through that test. For a testimony. Now Pharaoh has a dream. He has another dream. Calls in the magicians. All the wise men of Egypt. Not one of them could interpret his dreams. Then the chief butler says. My God I forgot about Joseph. Two years ago. Joseph interpreted my dream. And I haven't even given him a thought until just now. Why? Because it was God's will that the chief butler forget about him. Wow. Until now. Now it's God's time. Nothing has been wasted, child of God. All of what God, of what's happened to Joseph was preparing him for this very moment. Let me tell you tonight, everything that's happened to you and I is preparing us for this final hour. They're going to come to our door and say, do you have an answer? And that we'll look back and say, oh God, I failed that test. 
If I'd have stood that test, I could have told them he's a God of deliverance. He's a God of miracles. He's a God that will bring you through. Do we know tonight he's God? The same God that blew back the Red Sea. The same God that fed the multitude with a boy's watch is the God in this convention. He's the God we sung about. The God we preach about. The God we worship. The God we know is the same God tonight. He's the same man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told my wife last night when we laid down, I said, if we'll brag on him, he'll show up. If we'll trust him, he'll be there. He loves to be trusted. God has no need. So he creates one in your life and mine so he can fill it. That's the only reason he has no need. But he'll allow one to come in my life. He'll allow one to come in your life. I can look back at some of the tests, some of the trials. Had they not come... I don't know if I'd be in this convention. I don't know if I even, if I preach, if I'd have to say what I'm going to say tonight. Because I look back and say, he's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He allows the trial, the test, the storm. The prison cells will come. They'll forget about you. But it's the will of God. Joseph, your dreams were for such a time as this. Because it was God's will to forget the chief butler, to forget him until now. Now it's God's time. Nothing's been wasted. Joseph, your brother's jealousy, their hatred towards you was for such a time as this. It builds character. Hallelujah. That's what God allows that for, is to build character. We know what the world does when they, they're hated. We know what the, the world does when there's jealousy raging. But what in the church do we do when hatred's there? What do we do? We heard it this morning. When jealousy's there, church has ravished our Pentecostal churches with hatred and jealousy. Bitterness and unforgiveness has rooted itself in the Pentecostal church when the hatred and the jealousy was only to build your and my character. Joseph, you're being sold as a slave to a foreign country. As a young boy, to be so homesick without your mother or your dad. No phone calls, no emails, no letters, no visits. Just suffer in silence for such a time as this. Joseph, you're being lied on, imprisoned, forgot about by the butler. Was for such a time as this. Then Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he brought him out of that dungeon. And the Bible said, but Joseph, First shaved himself, cleaned himself up, put on his best clothes. Why? Made himself presentable. Why? Because he's going to stand before the king. Every trial, every test, every storm, every hatred, every betrayal, every being lied on, everything you've gone through, Joseph, has prepared you now. You're going to see the king. Thirteen years Joseph went through such terrible pain, such painful trials. How could God get any good out of all this? He had to go through it. Why? He's now going to see the king. 
Stay in faithful child of God. Knowing God spoke to him in a dream. He's got a thus saith the Lord. Oh, hold on to that. What was it, 30 years ago, I'd just come back to church and got right with God. And we went to a church. Some preacher had never seen him, never met him. I haven't told nobody. I just come home, my home's restored. I got right with God. We go to church. And a man got up to preach. He preached halfway through a message. He stopped. He said, You back there in that striped shirt. That was me. I'm thinking, Where do you guys want a door? Because I'm getting out of here. Because he's going to air out every bit part of my dirty laundry. I've never had this happen in my life. I've never told a soul that God had called me. When my dad died, God called me to preach, and I ran worse than Jonah could ever run because I didn't want nothing to do with it. That man of God said, don't you panic. Don't you worry about a thing. The Holy Ghost will never embarrass you. He said, the call of God's on your life. Do I know you? I said, no, sir. Have I ever met you? I said, no, sir. He said, you're following your daddy. He was a man of God. He's in heaven. I don't know you never met you, but God told me to tell you the call of God's on your life. You're going to go through some ter terrible trials. He said your entire family will abandon you one day in the ministry, but you keep preaching. You keep going. God's called you to go to the ends of this earth to preach this gospel. I'm telling you that thus saith the Lord went down in my spirit. I watched my family members of abandoned me. But when they walked out I held on to the assembly to that thus saith the Lord. I remember 30 years ago God said to me, this is what will happen. You will face it. You will go through it. But there's a thus saith the Lord in there. And I learned from my great mentor, Brother Clendenin, I'm going to stay here until the last one leaves. If the last one walks out, don't turn around. I'll just follow you out because I'm not going to run. I come here to stay. I come here to do the will of God. I'm not going to pack up or run. He taught me, preach it anyway. If they abandon you, go on anyhow. Keep doing the will of God. Saints, there's a thus saith the Lord in your spirit tonight. Go back to it and hold on to that man. Don't give in to it. Joseph, you're being lied on, imprisoned, forgot about by the butler. It was for such a time as this. Staying faithful to God, knowing God spoke to him in a dream. He's got a thus saith the Lord. No matter what I face or go through, if I'll stay true to God, even if it seems I've been done so wrong, even though it seems I've been forgotten by family and friends and butlers, I'm still in the will of God. And my day will come that the king is going to call for me. I've got to know that. Can I tell you tonight, faith has to be tested. When the Son of Man comes, is he going to find faith on the earth? The final test of the child of God, whoever you are, it's going to be your faith. It will be tested as every child of God has to come to that place. Just know being wronged, being lied on, being betrayed, be, whatever it was, is only only put me in a position to tell you God's faithful. I'm still loving him. I still love those that hated me. I can still pray for them. I can still forgive them. I can still love God in spite of it. Why? The king is about to send for me. It's so much easier to go through something when you know God allowed it. And you know God's hand is in it. Then if God allowed it, and God has put me in that place, then there's something he's doing. And I love what Brother Clinton has said. 
God, let me learn that lesson. Saints, I don't like starting over. I want to learn the first time. Whatever that trial, that test, whatever he's showing me, God, don't let me give in, give up, quit, or complain. But God, help me to hold on. Give me the grace to hold on to the horns of the altar until that victory, that breakthrough, that blessing comes. I want to pass this test. I thought of Stephen. Stephen, a man of God, doing nothing but living in obedience to Christ. And the religious people of his day paid people to lie against Stephen. How can God get any good out of this? A man doing nothing wrong. Healing the sick, casting out devils, feeding the poor, loving and giving to the body of Christ. Now he stands accused falsely of something he didn't even do. I'm sure it hadn't happened to none of you. While standing before his accused, Stephen is speaking the truth to them. Their Bible said they're cut to the heart. They're furious in their reaction to the truth. But Stephen, the Bible said, full of the Holy Ghost. Let me drive a point home tonight, saints. This is the secret to every trial. This is the answer to every test. Stay full of the Holy Ghost. God allows you and I to go through it. But then he wants us to stay full of the Holy Ghost. This church is where God will bring you and I to and give us the grace. You must ask for it. Oh God, give me the grace. Give me the faith to come through this. Grace is not just unmerited favor. Grace is God enabling you to do what you cannot do. My grace is sufficient for thee, he said. What's he saying? Ask me for grace for this test, this trial. He'll be glad to give it to you. While they're stoning him to death for preaching the truth, I ask the question, why would God allow such a godly man to suffer? Why would God allow such a godly man to die such a horrible death? How many of us have asked the same questions? One stone after another, finding a place on the man of God's body. You know the pain. Dad, what would it feel like to watch your own son be stoned to death by an angry mob and God's hand has been lifted? If God can take David's stone and land it in the middle of Goliath's forehead, God Almighty could have stopped every stone from ever touching his servant Stephen, but he never interfered. Every stone found a place from his head to his toes. Pain beyond words. I don't understand it. But you have to keep looking. You have to keep reading. One stone after another. It seems to us such an unfair treatment for doing right, living right. Where is God at in all of this? Number one. The last enemy you and I are going to face is death. He calls it an enemy. And that enemy of death for a child of God is to rob you of your faith. To put a question mark in your mind. Is this what I get for preaching this gospel all over the world? Is this what I get for the sacrifice of 50 years of preaching? Is cancer? Is this what I get? Hell loves to throw a question mark at the child of God. But as whatever the stoning is, whatever the sickness or the pain is, God Almighty has allowed it because the last enemy is death. And the enemy he is. Number two. 
It means that our faith is the final test for every believer. When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on this earth? God gave Stephen the grace to stand in faith through it all. I don't understand it. I love what Sister Clendenin said last night. I don't understand everything. I don't have to understand. Why? Because it takes faith to go on. It takes faith to trust. It takes faith to believe on. In spite of what your mind tells you. In spite of the situation. The circumstances. Why would God allow this? Why would God allow that trial? That test of your life and mine? I'll tell you why. He's God. And he never makes a mistake. Somebody said to me, you mean Brother Clendenin trusted God and died? I said, yeah, is there something wrong with that? I said, is there something wrong with trusting God and him taking you? Did he make a mistake? If you trusted God, why get mad at him? That's his choice, not mine. I trusted him. I think we forgot God's God. We've lost a reverence and a respect that we think if I'm going to trust him, he has to heal me. He has to let me live. He has to do it. I believe that. I trust that. You should. I should. We all should. But to totally trust him means it's no longer I that liveth. It's Christ that liveth in me. My breath is in his hands. If I'm going to trust him, I will not question the outcome because God never makes a mistake. I totally trust him. He hasn't made a mistake. This is his choice. I don't have to understand it all. I just know that my test of faith has been unleashed from all of hell. To get a question mark in my mind. That if this is what you get for preaching this gospel. That's one of the reasons I run from preaching. My dad died of a massive heart attack after preaching this gospel for 30 some years. I seen the, a dead person raised. I seen tumors fall off. I seen God use that man unbelievably mightily in a mighty way. And yet he died of a massive heart attack. I said if, God, if dad died, God died. I threw in the towel and run for my life. I never understood what I'm telling you tonight. But I've had to walk the same valley of the shadow of death. I've had to walk where it's total trust. If he lets me live till tomorrow, I'll preach. If he doesn't, I'm going home. Heaven ain't a bad deal. I've been trying to get there all my life. I'm telling you tonight, saints of God, total trust. There's nothing wrong with it. You can know that the stoning is just a part of trying to rob me of my faith. I kind of like this, though. God sitting there on his throne Jesus is sitting there next to him. I think God leaned over and said, Son, he's taking it for us. He's standing this trial. He's taking this test. His faith, son, is unwavering. Son, he's taking an unbelievable beating. And he is just praising us. He's just looking up to heaven. And about that time, Jesus said, I can't take no more. The Bible said, Stephen said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Let me tell you tonight, Jesus sat there and watched his servant take an old-fashioned stone. And, and Jesus said, that boy can stand that test. He's going through what I went through. I can't take no more. He stood up. Hear me, child of God. Jesus stood up and gave Stephen a standing ovation. For holding on to a storm in death. Hold on till you see Jesus standing at the right hand of God the Father. Stephen lets out a loud cry. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. In other words, God forgive them. They know not what they're doing. Could you pray that? Could I? In the back of that room was a murderer named Saul. Saul don't know it, but he's watching the man. He's going to take his place. Don't tell me Stephen didn't leave a landmark in Saul's mind. 
He said, I'm telling you something about this boy. Every stone that hit him, God, don't hold this sin to their charge. He's grasping for his last breath. Saul standing in the back of that room going, man, who is this guy? What is this guy? When they thought they would scream, is this what I get for serving you? He said, I see Jesus. He's standing at the right hand of God the Father. I see Jesus. I see Jesus. I'm telling you that got a hold of Saul of Tarsus. You know the story of what it did to Saul. Oh, God was saying, it's not how you die. It's not what you go through. Is your faith genuine? Does it hold on to a stone? It isn't how we die. Did we stay faithful? Forgiving? What's a few days of what you and I go through compared to eternity? Let me close with this tonight. Some of you here, you feel like Stephen. Some of you feel like Joseph. With all that you have been through, or are you or are going through, and you've wondered, how does God get any good out of this? Does God even care how much pain I've suffered in silence? Some of you tonight, You've not even told your wife. You haven't even told your husband, your kids, your best friends, how you really feel. The pain you've suffered in silence. Somebody in that church has cut your heart literally out of your chest. They've left you for dead. They wanted to wound you. They wanted to destroy and close the doors of that church. They thought you're gasping for your last breath. But if you will let that last breath be, oh God, forgive them. For they don't have enough sense to know what they're doing. They're not sinning against me. They're sinning against you. They're coming against your church. Give me the grace to forgive them. Give me the faith to forgive them. Oh God, let me hold on. You're here tonight. I know I'm not preaching a miss. You ask yourself. Are you a child of God? Of course you are. Are you walking in all the light you have? Are you doing your absolute best to serve God? Are you pure in heart towards God and man? Have you forgiven your enemies for what they did to you? Then like Joseph tonight, the will of God is that your friends betray you. That they lie about you. That they forget about you. They leave you alone. And it seems that nobody cares. But God has allowed all of this as his will for your life and mine. All of what happened to Joseph made him better, not bitter. Where I go in this nation to preach, how many preachers and preacher's wives will corner you? They're so bitter. Bitter, so angry at somebody that did or said or done. Every test is to make us better, not bitter. Can I tell you that's supernatural? It's not natural for me to take a whipping, for me to be disliked or to be hated or to be wronged. All my life, I broke more noses and I'd hate to admit. I had more fights and I hate to admit. You didn't get in my face, I would move you in a heartbeat. And the first thing in the ministry, I couldn't hit nobody. <laughs> you talk about frustrating. Because you know, you feel some relief when the blood or something splatters. And I go back home and sit down, and I think, oh, how weak. What a sissy. At least, you know, at least provoke them to take a swing at you so you can defend yourself. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? We're not to get bitter. It's to most to make me better. 
that I can look that enemy in the face and say, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for giving me the faith and the love that I don't have. But saints, it comes with a choice. I've got to say, God, I forgive him. I forgive her. I pray for my enemies. I forgive them from the heart. Oh, God, and if I haven't, give me the grace to do it. Reach inside and make a supernatural work in my heart. How do I know I forgive them when I hear their name or see them in the mall? I don't act bitter. My wife and I was in a restaurant just a short time ago. And this couple that caused a lot of trouble in our church happened to be in there. We walked in, my wife said, oh no. Where are we gonna sit? I said, right across from them. I said, cause I have nothing to hide. If anyone's gonna be nervous, it's gonna be them. It's amazing, they couldn't even remember us. They'd look at us and didn't even know us. Isn't that wonderful? I made up my mind. I love them, I forgive them. I'm not going to go in a restaurant and sit in some corner somewhere or eat in the bathroom. I'm going to eat in this restaurant. I'm not going to hide from nobody. You want forgiveness? You got it. If you don't, you run for your life because I'll still be here. I'm not going to run from anybody. I'm not going to tuck away somewhere and be holding bitterness and unforgiveness. I want God to make me better. And because Joseph could do that, he could stay true to God through 13 years. They only prepared him for the throne. You're not done tonight, child of God. You're not out. You're not forgotten. Your every trial, your every test has brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. Your trial, your test, your storm is only building you a platform to preach off of. Jesus climbed aboard that boat and he said, let's go to the other side. What's he do? He goes to sleep. What happened? The storm comes. They begin to scream and cry. Jesus, don't you care that we drown? He said, why is it you don't have any faith? What's wrong with you? All the faith you need is in this boat with you. God put you in that storm. All the faith you need is with you. He's in that boat. He can sleep through the storm. Why? Because he said, we're going to the other side. Amen. And all the faith you need is in this boat with you. Why is that, preacher? Because the storm is just part of going to the other side. It's just part of it. To avoid a trial, a test, is only going to rob you of a real platform to preach off of. I'm not a morbid, hard person. I'm not standing up here saying, you need a test. And I hope God smacks you upside the head. That's not what I'm saying. I've been through some very painful trials. I don't like them. And I'm not asking for another one tonight. But I do know one thing, Brother Casey. I can look back and I can say, God, thank you. I walked in our room a couple months back, and I'm standing there crying, and I told my wife, I said, Jackie, I thank God for every storm. I thank God for every trial. I thank him for every test. I said, I never dreamed I could say this. I said, this weeping is a laughter. I said, I can't tell you the joy that's in my soul because I know that my God is faithful. No matter what you face, what you go through. I come walking through the house three weeks ago on a Saturday. My wife has been over double, gasping, a pain in her chest. And she said, I don't know if it's a heart attack or what, but I can't breathe. And she's gasping for breath. I just reached around her. And I said, in the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus. Devil, you cannot have her. She belongs to God, and I need her, and I need her in this ministry. She said, <laughs> Stood up, looked at me, never had another sign. We've been through a lot. But I can tell you tonight, he is so faithful. How can God get any good out of this? Because he allowed it. He's trying to get your faith to grow. Yes, there's question marks. Why would a man suffer so for doing such a good job preaching and giving and sending and supporting? Why would Stephen have to go through so much? I believe he left me a testimony. I can come through the same trials that I can see Jesus in the middle of that storm Bow your heads. Father, I've preached my heart, and I believe yours. We live in a time that from this pulpit to the back door, we've all faced trials, tests, storms, question marks of what we faced, question marks of losing our great mentor, Brother Clinton, and of course there's question marks. But God, I thank you tonight that you're so faithful. I thank you tonight that what we don't understand, we can trust. What I thank you tonight, that you, what you have allowed is for the abandonment, for people to lie, for people to mistreat us, for people to say things about us. Everything you've allowed is only to build character so that my faith would grow, that you would be glorified in the middle of this storm. You, God, have allowed it. And I pray in this house tonight, those that have wondered, those that have almost given up, those that have thrown in the towel, that are saying, and God, what's the use every time I get going another trial, another storm, another family quits, and another one comes, and another one quits. God, I can't seem to get a breakthrough. But in this camp meeting, I've learned tonight, you have allowed that as a test of my life to build character. And God, through that, you will add to that church. You may subtract. I'll trust you to do it. But I'll let you add what you want to add. In Jesus' name. Would you stand across this congregation?